before we get into the actual base of this video, we just want to remind you guys that we do have a giveaway on right now. Correct. Uh, about a little over a week left. Here above my head will be a card. If you haven't seen that video, go watch that video. That's mm -hmm. how you figure out how to enter to win. Alrighty. Yeah. And we're giving away a uh, postal little bag. Yeah. One of them. Filled with baits. Yeah. And, and super easy to enter. There's only two, three things you got to do. It's super easy and it's totally worth the effort. It's yep. our 100 subscriber giveaway. Enjoy that. Now, on to the actual content of this video. This week is officially April. That means it's springtime throughout the land. And you gotta adjust for that, you gotta throw them April baits. And what are those April baits? Well, the good news is it's the same baits as last month. <laughs> Pretty much. Just with a little emphasis on uh, bottom bouncing because mm -hmm. now we're in April. This is the time of year whenever the most people are going to be experiencing the spawn. Mm -hmm. Mommy and daddy bass are ready to spawn. so. It's time for bed fishing, and we're happy about it. Uh, now, we we will preface this. We know bed fishing is still a little controversial amongst some people. Definitely not as much as it was, and I don't really care. So exactly. we're going to talk about bed fishing in this video. Really, the main focus is on predation, predators, uh, yep. bass protecting their eggs from predators. So as we go through these baits, you're definitely going to see uh, mimicking predators that would be normally eating bass eggs this time of year. Exactly. That's just going to be the overwhelming trend Absolutely. for this video. Mm -hmm. Whether that be bluegill, uh, salamanders, uh, lizards, just different types of insecty things. Weird stuff that don't really look like a whole bunch, but bass don't like. Yeah. All right. Let's get into them. All right. We're going to kick this off with a cast and jig. Now, jigs. They're a great bass catcher. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows it. Now, normally, but when you when you think about bed fishing, normally you're thinking, all right, we're going to be going shallow. We're going to be two to three foot of water. I'm going to throw a light jig. But I challenge that. I say throw your heavier. Your, more than what you normally throw, a three-eighths, a half ounce. That way, when you cast this out there and you're trying to pull it slowly across that bed, trying to aggravate that bass, you're not, if every time you do the rod something, that jig ain't coming up off the ground and doing its thing, all right? You want it to sit there and move and do all kinds of things looking like it's eating that egg. You want to spend as much time in that bed as possible. Aggravate that bass as much as possible. Never mind the fact, bigger jigs, bigger overall profile, something that a bass might find as more of an issue being on the bed. Mm -hmm. You know, the bass on beds have a tendency to kind of ignore small stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, you've seen videos of people talking about fishing on a bed for a specific fish for over an hour. Mm -hmm. If they're throwing something small, might not entice that bite for the bass to actually try and move it off the bed. Absolutely. So when you're using that big, this a half ounce Stanley casting jig uh, with that Berkeley Pit Boss on there, that is a great look. And of course you can see it's kind of a bluegill kind of colorway. Uh, and that's why I'm, you know, I'm mimicking a bluegill, something that's going to be trying to go after them eggs on that bed, a predator. And boom, I think the Stanley Cassie jig does a good job, or any jig, uh, when you're just sitting there dragging it, looking like it's eating off the bottom there. Yep. Now, I think creature baits are a big part of bed fishing, uh, again, because you're trying to make it look like a predator. But we'll talk about that a little more. In a minute. Next up is another jig variety. Indeed. Who would have thought? We like jigs right here. <laughs> and it's going to be a swimming jig. All right. Mm -hmm. Specifically, this is that Kitek Model 3 tungsten swim jig. All right. Paired up with a Strike King Rage Crawl. Yeah, absolutely. And this is an all black jig with a watermelon red Rage Crawl. Yeah. And what I'm going to be doing with these, slow rolling them on the bottom. Slow rolling them on the bottom. Looking like a predatory fish, or in this case, craw, or creature, whatever you yeah. throw on here. Yeah, just whatever. You know, it, as long as it looks like a predator, and you're just taking it across that bed, making them bass angry, making them think, man, you're after them eggs, all right? They don't want you in that bed. Yep. You know, that's their territory. They're going to defend it. They get angry. Kentucky's a stand-your-ground state. Exactly. Castle Doctrine, remember that. 
All jokes aside, this is a very good technique to catch some fish. And you can throw on the lighter end of this too since yeah. you're, you're moving it. So if you want to throw a smaller profile, maybe they don't want that big honking piece of lead at yeah. the bottom, maybe size down with swim jig. Yeah, I mean quarter ounce. I mean three eighths you can do it. Yeah. But I'd say quarter ounce swim jig, just, you know, again, just creeping it along, maybe even hopping it. Yeah. If you're not wanting to swim it, just hop it. Really just do stuff to make them bass angry, but that slow kind of swimming on the bottom, giving it some little ditty daddies and whatnot like that. That's going to aggravate them, and that's going to get a bit. Whatever that means. Mm, Diddy daddies. Diddy daddies. Next up, shaky head. Yep. Now, excuse, I just noticed I have this worm actually upside down on this, but it, not that it matters. It's the same thing. But this is that fat baby finesse worm from Strike King on some random shaky head. <laughs> but shaky head worm. Killer. Yep. I mean, that's a killer a lot of the year. I mean, but now I'm kind of throwing a little downsized kind of form. Definitely uh, not magnum. Is, uh, this is a four and a half inch worm, I believe. Uh, but natural color. Now, some guys subscribe to the fact that you should use bright colored or really dark colored baits. Uh, sure. If that's going to help you see that bait, if you need to see that bait, yeah. which, you know, does help when bed fishing. Overall sight fishing yeah. just helps. Uh, you could throw that methylate worm. You could throw that straight black worm, and that will help you see it. Bubble gum. But you know, if you're in clear water and you can just see it anyway, yeah. Uh, by all means, throw a natural colored worm. Match that hatch. Them bass aren't caring about that color. You know, they're just gonna eat, or well, they're really just trying to move whatever off the bed. Yeah. They're not even worried about eating right now. But you put some in that bed. They want it out. They don't like it being there. They're going to attack it. So they're going to pick that up. And again, you want to try your best not to spook them right now. You're not wanting to give big hook sets, especially on them jigs. You're not wanting to set that hook really hard right off the bat. Because once they feel that tension, I mean, once you go to set that hook, that's going to spook them. And they're not going to hit anything else. So try to avoid that. Uh, when it comes to a shaky head, you're not really setting the hook hard anyway. Yeah. It's kind of a pick up, reel kind of into reel it. Into it. Uh, that's perfect right now. You're not wanting to spook them off like that. So if they don't have that hook and you just pull it out of their mouth, kind of, might spook them a little bit, but it ain't going to be detrimental to your fishing. Nope, simply just cast back in there. Uh, but get that shaky head in there and in shaky head fashion, just have it sitting there, kind of give it some little shakes, get that tail of that worm kind of just going. Yep. And then bass gonna hit, and it's gonna be good for you. And there's tons of baits you can throw on a shaky head. Absolutely, floating worms do really well right now. I, seventh cast makes a good one. Uh, but again, floating or just straight tail worm, really nice finesse worm. I prefer the downsized size right now. Uh, bass are a little finicky. Yep. Uh, but Senko on there. Uh, any sort of straight tail worm, any sort of finesse worm, floating or non-floating. Want a little bit more action? You can do a speed worm or... Yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, but, shaky head. Next up, bait number four, a Senko. No, oh, good old Senko. All around killer. Absolutely. I mean, more fish have been caught on a Senko. Just about anything Yeah, else. probably anything. I mean... Def, I would just say more fish have been won, or more money has been won. Oh, on a Senko, yeah, anything else. probably so. So, it's no surprise that there's going to be a bed fishing video that includes a Senko. Absolutely. Right? And T-Rigs, wacky rigs. That's what you're doing. All right? Mm -hmm. Just drop this on the bed, vertical jig it up, or flutter it with the wacky, weighted or weightless, whatever yeah. your flavor wants to be. Personally, I would go weightless because you're fishing shallow. Yeah, absolutely. So you don't need that weight to bring it down in the water mm -hmm. column. But you could if you wanted to move it fast. Yeah, I mean, or even if, you, if you're if you wanting to just dead stick it yep. and barely creep it along with some shaking, that's a good way to add that's weight there. Uh, but, I mean, there's not too many presentations out there that bass just don't care that much about how you present it to them. No. Nope. There's just something about a psycho. Sankos just work, my man. And for those who are wondering, this is a five-inch Yammy in number 
297 NF large green pumpkin. Mm. It's basically a watermelon candy, or green pumpkin candy. Yeah, green pumpkin candy color. Yep. Uh, I'm going to be doing about 50-50 Texas rig, wacky rig. Yeah. I'm really getting big on that wacky rig, really catching a lot on there. The Texas rig is just a classic go-to way to catch them. Yep. And it's hard to beat. It's hard to fish a Senko wrong, and it's a Senko. It's going to catch <laughs> Absolutely. There's not much describing we need to do with this one. Yeah, let the bait do the work for you. Exactly. Next up is probably one of the most widely used baits for bed fishing. Yep, most accepted. Yeah, and that's a T-Rig or Carolina Rig creature bait yep. of some sort. Probably the most common right now is going to be a lizard yeah. or a salamander, whatever you want to call it. And this is that Zoom lizard classic, and that's a that natural green color, which is a very interesting color. Let me show you that. So on top, we kind of got a very pale, translucent green color to a very clear, kind of reddish pearl uh, randomness. Yeah. But uh, it might be easier to show you that way. See that lamination. Very good color, very natural color. Will get bit. Just crawling that lizard across there. Salamanders are bass mortal enemy mm -hmm. during this time of the year and they hate these little dudes and they will pick it up and they will attack it and you will catch a bass it's just that simple but trey has another bait that's also very big right now yep for the same purpose still texas rig carolina rig creature bait just a little different type and that would be your hog varieties absolutely many companies make them just about every company now makes one. Yeah. And for all intents and purposes, they're all doing the same thing pretty well. And that's yep. imitating something eating eggs, all right? Yeah, absolutely. This is that Strike King Game Hog, all right? Mm -hmm. You could go with the original Zoom. Brush hog. Brush hogs. If you're a Guggen guy, they got the Trench Hog. Gambler Bacon Run. Uh, even though, the, yeah, Ozark Trail has one. Yep, the Hammer Hog. And this stuff is actually really I'm good. I'm actually... If you're sleeping on the hammer hog, if you're sleeping on Ozark Trail Soft Plastic, I'm sorry for you because they actually nail them. Oh, yeah. And since we're talking about it, I might as well uh, show the difference. For $1.97. Hammer hog here, game hog here. Very similar profile, very similar design. These all do relatively the same thing, and they do it well. T rigged, Tokyo rigged, Carolina rigged, weightless if you want to. Yeah, it's whatever. And they're just going to catch fish. Uh, again, they're kind of imitating lizards or salamanders or snakes or whatever the heck that yep. thing looks like. <laughs> <laughs> it really don't look like a whole lot. No, it don't. But it bass think to. it does. Yep. It, they do. So, I mean. To us, it doesn't have to look like anything. To them, it's just got to make a mango. Yeah. And then one last type of creature bait that I want to talk to you about is just a standard crawl style bait. Uh, this is that V&M wild crawl and boy that sucker looks juicy don't it oh yeah that's in that falcon lake crawl color you got that green pumpkin with gold black flake on top with that red with red flake laminate i mean boy that sucker looks juicy and it's kind of mixed like a rage crawl type action you got these big fat claws on here big kicking action any sort of thing like that now rage crawl one of, you know, if not my favorite bait of all time, it's top two. Uh, and they catch fish. And this does too. Yep. So any sort of crawl style looking bait will catch you fish right now too. Same thing, t rig, Carolina rigged, Tokyo rigged, any sort of rig. Just get it put in that bed, stay in that bed for as long as you can, and aggravate them bass. That's the name of the game. Last is a repeat from our March Baits video, but we felt like this is a bed fishing video, so it really has to be hit before we can move on. Exactly, and that is bluegill imitation soft body swim baits. Absolutely. But here you go, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and again, I'm going to restate what I said in the last video for March. All you're doing with these is slow rolling them past the bed or dropping them on the bed. Mm -hmm. And just 
hopping it. Exactly. Keep it there as long as you can. Make it look like a bluegill. Hitting that bottom, getting eggs. Majority, if not all of these, are nose weighted. So they're going to hit the bottom looking like that at that 45 degree angle. Mm -hmm. So just hop that sucker continuously. Like I said in our previous video where a soft body bluegill swim bait was featured, a lot of them have a hook hanger down here, all right? Indeed. Don't use it. If you're swimming the sucker so low to the bottom, literally touching the bottom, hopping it, all that trouble hook down there is going to do is get you hung up. Absolutely. You're going to start losing baits, losing money. Nobody likes that, so nope. don't use it. Yeah, absolutely. Simple as that. Yeah, 100%. Uh, but again, you just want to make sure you're putting this in that bed. Just slow rolling it. Maybe like kind of hitting the bottom, kind of bouncing it a little bit. Make that look like a bluegill. Yep. Invading that bass's territory. Getting all up in their business. Trying to eat them eggs, man. Mm -hmm. And you will catch bass. Lastly, about these, the Headhunter Savage Gear just came out with, a, with the, the structure gill. A lot of these are Mega Bass, the Dark Sleeper even. Yeah, yeah. I would throw in this category, even though it's a goby. Or, yeah, a little goby, guppy, whatever you want to call them. Um, a lot of them have the hook being uh, inside the body that has a magnetic retention system that then the hook pops out when you set the hook. Mm -hmm. You don't really want that for this. If, you, if that's all you have, you can fish that. You can still catch fish, not saying you can't. But the nature of those, you have to have a stout hook set. You got to set the hook pretty hard. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, you're going to be spooking fish. Absolutely. So having one with an exposed hook point, especially since you're fishing pretty much shallow open water, Yep. You're not really dealing with structure too, too much. Mm -hmm. This will do you just fine. And you can keep a lighter hook set. And that wraps up this video for the most part. We know there may be a little overlap with the March video, but March video still applies. If yep. you're not bed fishing right now, if you're opposed to bed fishing, or you just, you're not at that time of year yet, or that stage, the March video is what you need to be throwing. Yep. But if it's April and your bass are bedding up and spawning, you need to follow this video and you need to use the baits from this video because this is the best bait for this time of year. Yep. If you go out bed fishing, you can take every single one of these and have a field day. Indeed. So thank you guys for enjoying this video and helping our community grow. Don't forget about our giveaway. It's like two or three easy steps in a three minute video. Super easy to win. You got another week to do it. Go win you some baits. Yeah, exactly. There's gonna be some juicy stuff in there. Yeah, absolutely. We don't give away garbage. No. Yeah, ask our last winner, Michael Zarati. Uh, plus, check out our videos on the end screen if you like this content, you wanna see more. Uh, we enjoy making it, we just hope you watch it. Y'all have a good day, and if you notice I popped up with a hat a little bit through the video, it's because our camera died part way through. But that's the story of the way.